the role of the chief executive officer is crucial to the success, indeed the survival of every organization. Since he is the fountain of all power, authority, everybody looks up to him. And what he decides goes. So, the amplitude of all his decisions as is so large that it can be felt in the nooks and crannies of the organization. Whatever he says and does cascades down into the bowels of the organization. People take every nuance of his expressions, his words, his thoughts and then analyze it ad nauseum and interpret it in their own way. If he makes a mistake, the consequences are catastrophic for the organization. So, the chief executive officer commands a very large share of the mind space, heart space and business space of the organization. Traditionally, the chief executive officer is the face of the organization, especially when it comes to dealing with the outside world. My own belief is that the chief executive officer's time has to be apportioned in a ratio of something like 30, 70 or 40, 60. The lower amount, the 30 percent or 40 percent of his time has to be spent within the organization, looking closely deep within, reviews, appraisals, briefings, strategic thinking, operational decisions, conflict resolution amongst his top team, major financial marketing sales technology HR compliance decisions. But the other 70 or 60 percent of his time I believe needs to be spent facing outward interacting and engaging with the external environment, building networks, creating visibility for the organization, making the larger world aware of what his organization stands for and where it is going, which means participating in conferences, conventions, associations, traveling and meeting customers, understanding customer needs as they are today, the gaps in the need satisfaction of customers and where the preferences of customers are heading over the next few years. And the objective of looking at the external world and engaging deeply with it is to understand the trajectory of the external environment so that he can then make appropriate course corrections and decisions to position his organization in such a way that it maps to the needs of the customers and external environment. For example, if it is an organization which is involved in manufacturing hazardous chemicals, <coughs> not only does the CEO need to know <coughs> how the customer needs are evolving, but he also needs to see where compliance in terms of environmental controls are heading, what kind of standards are likely to be relevant 5 years from now, what are the concerns of the pollution control departments and boards of the government and what kind of discharge levels and pollution levels are going to be unacceptable over the next few years. And with all that in mind, he has to reverse engineer and construct a capital expenditure budget and create capabilities within the organization both in terms of 
money, physical infrastructure and capabilities of the people concerned to ensure that his organization complies with the standards that are required a few years from now. So, this is the meaning of engaging with the external world. But I think there is another very, very important aspect in so far as his role as a leader is concerned. A couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that 30 to 40 percent of his time needs to be spent internally focused, which means looking deep within the organization. While it is easy to understand the necessity for reviews and appraisals and those kinds of daily decisions, I would like to stress on the real meaning of the CEO. To me, the CEO is a leader and leadership means encouraging his people, empowering his people, being empathetic. So, does not it make sense that the chief executive officer is actually the chief encouragement officer, the chief empathy officer, the chief empowering officer. These are not altruistic concerns or altruistic ideas. They are grounded in basic organizational and motivational theory. If the CEO is an encouraging positive presence, it is axiomatic that everybody around him and below him in the hierarchy will be free, relaxed and highly motivated. They will own everything that they do and when people own what they do, their productivity and effectiveness will multiply and when their productiveness and effectiveness multiplies profitability zooms up, cash flows in copiously. So, you see being the chief encouragement officer has critical implications for the organization's profitability and cash. So, while we always talk about how the CEO is hard driving, no nonsense, hard as nails, business like dynamic, external facing and so on and so forth, I think every CEO worth his salt must appreciate his absolutely vital role as a custodian of the motivation and ownership levels of the people around him, which can then translate into productivity and effectiveness. So, to me the chief executive officer is the chief encouragement officer.